Hi everyone, it's Farisha, and welcome back to Casual Fridays with Executive Education. Now this is part two of our Water and Public-Private Partnerships episode as part of our Water and Sustainability series in collaboration with our Institute of Water Policy. Now in the previous episode, I sat down with Olivia Jensen, a senior research fellow at the Institute, and we explored questions on how PPPs are formed, what kind of policy gaps they could fill, and why they're important to governments and societies all around the world. Now in part two, we'll be zooming in on public-private partnerships in the water sector, specifically looking at Singapore and the region. So I think we want to turn our attention to Singapore. We know that here, uh, PPP is a relatively new and somewhat unusual concept. You know, the government introduced PPP in 2003, and over the years, PPPs have been awarded for notable projects, such as um, the Singapore Sports Hub and the IDE, ITE College West campus. So, do you know if we have water PPPs in Singapore? Well, we do, and <laughs> I know that it comes as a bit of a surprise. Mm -hmm. When you have such an efficient and effective national water agency, you wonder why Singapore has PPPs. And in fact, almost all of the desalination and water reuse capacity that's been built in Singapore mm -hmm. has used these um, public-private partnerships. Ah. So, I think the explanation lies mm -hmm. in um, two points. Mm -hmm. The first one is that Singapore's mainly used PPPs when it's wanted to engage in a new technology. Okay. And it's used the PPP structure as a way to bring in design ideas and innovative ideas about management to, uh, to these new types of projects on mm -hmm. desal or, or reuse. Mm -hmm. The second point is that PPPs in Singapore, I think, have been used as a way of benchmarking the efficiency of the public sector. And mm -hmm. that's something really distinctive yeah. uh, about the Singapore public management system. Yeah, no, that's, that's really interesting. And I mean, talking about Singapore, what about you know, looking at Asia um, and how you know, Asia's growing economy and population really underscore the important role of infrastructure in supporting this economic development? You know, with a number of governments facing fiscal pressures, especially in the last year, infrastructure financing can be a real challenge for these governments. So I guess this is where we can see the private sector sort of coming in and helping to fill that gap. You know, in your opinion, what kind of reforms do you think governments can adopt in order to attract these water PPP um, investments? I think these reforms have to occur at three levels. Mm -hmm. The first is the most important and in many ways the most difficult, yeah. and that's the macro institutional context. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of things like corporate governance, um, accounting, yeah. uh, the transparency and fairness of the judiciary. Mm -hmm. um, those are things that need to be in place for success with PPPs across infrastructure sectors. The second is the water sector specifically, and I'm thinking about policy objectives. Mm -hmm. Now, I think for PPPs to work, curiously, it has to be the government that knows exactly what it wants to achieve out of them. Mm -hmm. And having clear, monitorable policy objectives mm -hmm. really helps to design the kind of PPP that you need and that can succeed. Mm -hmm. The third is at their contract level itself. Mm -hmm. And you know, despite the name, partnerships, I've seen, you see so many uh, of these contracts which start off almost on an adversarial basis. Mm -hmm. where the interests of the public and private sectors just don't seem to be aligned. Mm -hmm. Now, that forms a very bad basis for a long-term relationship, which mm -hmm. is what's needed, because um, over the course of 20 or 30 years, things are going to change in the operating environment, mm -hmm. and both parties need to be ready to, to readjust with a common goal of improving water services. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Olivia, for sharing those insights. I think it's really interesting to look at PPPs in three different levels, right? And to see how they sort of interconnect with each other. That's right. Mm -hmm. So if you're interested to find out more, we'll be covering these issues in more detail in our Water Leadership Program later in the year. Mm -hmm. And if you are a senior official working for a national, regional, and city government agency across Asia, and you're dealing with urban water policy and large utilities that have policy functions, we welcome you and your colleagues to apply for the Tomasic Foundation Water Leadership Program happening on 20th to 25th June this year. More information can be found below. Until then, stay safe and we'll see you on the next episode of Casual Fridays. Bye. Bye. <laughs>